Everyone will be live in three, two, one. We're live. Hello, everyone. Sorry for that brief technical glitch. We'd now like to continue with Dr. Ganesh's um, presentation for today. Dr. Ganesh. Thank you. Uh, so let me uh, go ahead. Uh, the topic uh, is uh, evolving uh, concepts in small animal fracture fixation. What are the lessons learned? Um, again, I have some issues. Dr. Ganesh, if you could just go to the bottom left of your screen, you should okay. see some arrows there. That should assist with the, um, the movement. See if okay. that works. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so the uh, fractures in small animals are quite common uh, issues or problems uh, which we uh, deal with. Uh, on a, and then the fractures of bones in small animals can be a simple hairline fracture into severe, uh, severely comminuted uh, fractures with a lot of bony fragments. And also it can be a open fracture. So, um, Earlier, uh, before 1915s, uh, the fractures both in human patients and animal patients were treated uh, conservatively. That means uh, the human patients were uh, lying on the bed for a number of days or weeks or with attraction, uh, followed by a cast or splint application. And similar uh, way of treating fractures in animals where uh, cast or splints uh, were applied. And uh, no doubt uh, animals would be uh, uh, free from pain uh, uh, after bandaging. And, uh, but then uh, the quality of life uh, after the fracture heals, uh, the short term or long term is the, is the point to be considered. Uh, at times what happens is fractures conservatively with bandages may lead to uh, a condition what we call the fracture disease, which includes uh, muscle atrophy, joint stiffness, uh, tissue additions and osteoporosis. Uh, particularly uh, fractures uh, close to joints, uh, this is a major problem. So uh, what happened uh, to solve the issues with uh, casting and splinting both in human patients and animals? Initially, the human surgeons in Switzerland about, initially uh, human surgeons, they joined and then they did uh, uh, fracture repair in their patients uh, uh, several times and then they formed a group and then came out with the principles of fracture treatment uh, uh, differently. And then they called themselves, uh, a group was formed, which is known as the uh, AO group. So in the year 1958, AO group was formed, which is Association of Osteosynthesis. And then in the year 1968, nine, WET group was uh, founded. So initially uh, in a dog, the first internal fixation was uh, using a Kunshia nail on a dog. Uh, operated by a vet, of course, uh, in the supervision of two human surgeons. And then uh, the AO principles included uh, uh, the restoration of the uh, anatomy of the bone. That, that means anatomical reconstruction of the uh, fractured bone. And then establishing uh, stability or uh, rigid uh, fixation. The third the principle is uh, atraumatic or less traumatic uh, surgical techniques uh, so to preserve the blood supply. And then most important, the AO group uh, felt that uh, early mobilization of the limb or the patient is uh, quite important uh, post-operatively for the recovery of the patient. Right, uh, so the AO group uh, came out with a uh, slogan that uh, life is movement and uh, movement is life. And is the AO group of uh, human surgeons and veterinary surgeons follow, the, follow this uh, slogan of uh, life is movement and movement is life. So which means that as soon as the patient is uh, fixed, the fracture is fixed, the patient need to uh, be mobile uh, so that uh, no uh, fracture disease or no other issues uh, will be uh, uh, arising. So the, basically the AO principles are based on uh, the biomechanical principles, the biomechanics of the bone and uh, the tissues around. And then they also uh, improved the uh, metal uh, used for uh, implants uh, to make it more biocompatible. And then they designed uh, the instruments uh, with the help of uh, engineers. So with the improved design of implants, they could do a better job. 
and then the techniques were uh, designed uh, so that uh, they could be able to achieve uh, the AO principle uh, or principles of fracture fixation. It involved uh, a team of surgeons, a team of engineers, physicists, uh, metallurgists, biologists, scientists, and producers. Producers mean uh, the manufacturers of uh, uh, implants. So basically, the AO techniques that started uh, in the beginning uh, was the interfragmentary compression, uh, bone splinting, a combination of interfragmentary compression and bone splinting, and adaptation osteosynthesis. What they are. So uh, fastening the bone or uh, plate osteosynthesis, what we mean, or uh, yeah, fastening the bone fragments, uh, you uh, try to bring about compression at the fracture site. So when uh, the surgeons used uh, special implants and then the techniques in such a way to uh, bring about uh, compression at the fracture site, the bone is the fractured bone is supposed to heal by primary healing without formation of callus. Uh, we use uh, the uh, dynamic compression plates. Uh, we use uh, other methods like uh, tension band principles, uh, lag screws, and so on. So by uh, loading the screws in such a way that uh, the fragments can be brought together, not just brought together, but then they also get compressed uh, each other uh, rigidly. So that leads to always a primary bone healing or direct bone healing, the formation of a callus. Whereas the tension band wiring for fractures of certain locations of the bone, uh, we use uh, some small uh, pins or K wires and uh, orthopedic wires in such a way that the uh, the distraction force is counteracted and then uh, ends with interfragmentary uh, compression for the fracture to heal uh, uh, without callus or with primary healing. So an example of a fracture uh, calcaneus or tubercalcis band wiring. So the animal can uh, wait bare uh, sooner after surgery, maybe the very next day, and then it can ambulate. So similarly, we have a, a principle of lag screw wherein again, uh, dynamic, uh, I mean, interfragmentary compression is uh, achieved by using screws uh, alone in a particular fashion, uh, which uh, brings about interfragmentary compression. For certain types of fractures, we use lag screws uh, so that there would be, uh, uh, ex we can expect a ring. So the second principle is, uh, second technique is bone splinting where, uh, we cannot bring about interfragmentary compression in case of uh, commuted fractures. So probably uh, uh, the, the fragments uh, are removed, which are loose fragments, and then bone grafts are incorporated, and a rigid uh, plate or splint is applied. And then uh, without interfragmentary compression, uh, a support for the fragments are made, what we call the bone splinting. The, uh, the bone is not sharing the load, the implants share the load totally. If the animal is weight bearing, the load would be carried by the bone up to the point of the implant, and then the implant carries the load further down. So there is no load sharing, whereas there'll be load bearing. Whereas the combination of interfragmentary compression and bone splinting, where for oblique fractures and butterfly shaft fractures, a combination of lag screw is being done where the plate would function as a neutralization plate. And then the load would be shared by the bone as well as shared by the implant. So there'll be load sharing. And then finally, uh, adaptation osteosynthesis, where uh, the fragments are reduced to normal uh, anatomical position by using weak implants like uh, K wires or small thin uh, pins, and then they can withstand only smaller forces. So usually it is performed in young or juvenile uh, animals where the growth plate or the, the physis is open. Um, so these are the four principles laid by the AO, uh, which still is a gold standard uh, practiced by human surgeons and uh, animal, uh, vet animal veterinary surgeons, uh, where the principles are related to anatomy, stability, biology, and uh, early mobilization. Uh, so I thought I'll share some of my experiences, uh, even though I've been doing uh, uh, the last 20 years and soft tissue surgery since the last 40 years. Uh, I thought I'll share my, uh, some of my experiences in the last 10 years uh, when I was in Trinidad and then moved to other uh, countries and back to Trinidad uh, after 10 years. So uh, some of the fracture repairs we did 
at uh, the School of Veterinary Medicine here, uh, following the AO principles, starting from a simple intramodullary pinning or intramodullary nailing using Steenman pins. Uh, this is and uh, at times, along apart from the pinning, we do also uh, wiring. It could be a circulage wiring or hemicirculage wiring, and also uh, tension band wiring for little complicated fracture at the joint where the head of the femur, the greater fracture, and then the shaft of the femur or three three fragments are aligned, and then a few uh, two K wires are used for stabilizing the fracture, the head, uh, and then tension band wiring for the on the uh, shaft of the bone. And then uh, similarly, uh, avulsion fracture of the TBL tuberosity uh, repaired with uh, tension band uh, wiring. And uh, fractures involving the distal humerus, uh, which are salta harris uh, type four, uh, in a young uh, growing animals or puppies, we treat with a few K wires in a, uh, uh, inserted in a diagonal uh, fashion. And uh, similarly, the proximal end of uh, fractures of uh, humerus, and then, uh, in osteosynthesis uh, technique. And then uh, bone splinting, where uh, these comminuted fractures, severely comminuted fractures, where we normally do as uh, anatomical reconstruction of the bone, where we take a lot of uh, efforts to bring the bone back to its normal original anatomical position and structure. And then we stabilize with uh, plate and screws as well as uh, times with uh, wires. So this is uh, a sort of bone splinting uh, performed. And uh, the fracture of sacroiliac joint uh, with a lax screw and uh, a combination of a position screw and uh, fractures of uh, pelvis uh, with again uh, dynamic compression uh, plating. So these are some of the uh, cases, a uh, few examples of uh, using AO techniques for treating uh, different types of fractures, bilateral fracture of the mandible uh, managed with uh, a, a, a buttress plate and then uh, interfragmentary wiring for the fragmentary compression on the other side. So the goals of fracture treatment is supposed to be a rapid and uh, complete restoration of the uh, function of the bone and joints. And then stable realignment of the bones and the restoration of full range of movement of the joints for the early limb function. Um, and then uh, the osteosynthesis, which is otherwise internal bone fixation to achieve this goal is by open reduction and internal fixation always. So the anatomy, uh, is a sort of uh, approach which is uh, followed uh, even today for certain type of fractures where we put the pieces back together and then make the uh, normal anatomical uh, uh, original position of the bone. So what happens, the uh, surgeon who is uh, doing this is a sort of a carpenter where the, the, the interest is to bring back all the fractured fragments in a perfect anatomical position like a car. So uh, ensuring anatomical reconstruction of bony column with implants, uh, inst instant mechanical support provided, the patient is allowed to use the leg uh, sooner after surgery. This was the patient we operated uh, just very recently. So the carpenter surgeon uh, knows uh, uh, very well that uh, the clients uh, sometimes uh, don't uh, understand the concept of confinement post-operatively, uh, as well the uh, pets may not be comfortable so uh, always we uh, try to do a stronger uh, repair uh, so that being a carpenter surgeon, we can sleep well at night on the day of surgery. Uh, but then uh, what happens, uh, the process of anatomical reconstruction, we have to open the fracture site and uh, which always uh, results in removing the fracture hematoma, which is the initial uh, healing uh, process required of healing and damage as uh, we tend to damage the normal blood supply uh, around the fracture site, uh, even though we try to preserve as much as possible, but still there will be damage to the blood vessels uh, supplied by the surrounding soft tissues uh, to the bone fragments. And then in the process of uh, fixing fractures, which usually takes a couple of hours, uh, depending on the type of fracture, uh, there is a possibility of uh, contamination at the surgical site uh, and probably uh, for post-op infection. And uh, also uh, the uh, anesthetic time uh, gets uh, increased. So uh, due to what happens to the anatomical reconstruction, um, 
it's often we see some complications like uh, infection, uh, delayed union or uh, non-union or implant failures. So the uh, surgeons uh, decided to continue to do their research uh, in fracture healing, which uh, changes or goals or principles uh, of uh, fracture osteosynthesis. Uh, even though the anatomical reconstruction is uh, one of the best uh, choice or option, uh, particularly for uh, articular fractures. Whereas the Gardner surgeon uh, does a different approach where uh, more uh, biology is uh, focused the gardener uh, minded surgeon uh, strives to encourage uh, rapid healing by nurturing the uh, tissues uh, or, or by totally uh, staying out of it. So the goal here is not to reach uh, uh, radiographic or anatomic or mechanical perfection, uh, but then just uh, fasten the major bone fragments and then allow the mother nature to do the magic, uh, to do the remaining job. So then uh, who is the versatile orthopedic surgeon? Uh, carpenter or a gardener surgeon? It should be a carpenter, garden, a hybrid or combination. So the vers versatile surgeon is a combination of carpenter and gardener, otherwise a hybrid of uh, strength and uh, nurturing of the uh, uh, whatever we are dealing with. So uh, the more uh, modern approach in fracture repair uh, is uh, balanced mechanical as well as biological approach. So the goal is to minimize the iatrogenic uh, trauma to the patient so that uh, there'll be a speedy recovery of the patient. So coming to few of the implants uh, designed and uh, developed or improved uh, starting from uh, a round hole plates, still we use a round hole plates. Uh, whereas uh, sometime in 1969, uh, the dynamic compression plate was evolved. Uh, to bring about interfragmentary compression. And then a uh, then lot of changes in designs uh, resulted in bridge plate uh, and combination of plate and rod usage and uh, uh, fixators and then limited contact uh, dynamic compression plate to increase the, to maintain the periosteal blood supply was introduced sometime in 1980s. And then uh, locking compression plate came something like internal uh, fixators and then uh, also point contact uh, fixators uh, sometime during uh, 1987, where the further uh, damage to the periosteal vessels were uh, avoided by using uh, PC uh, fix uh, uh, plates. There are much more, several more uh, implants are there. So the uh, implants are constantly being uh, uh, designed, uh, improved uh, for uh, better uh, usage. We also have uh, specifically for veterinary use uh, for smaller animal patients, uh, particularly toy breeds and so on, veterinary cuttable plate, where we can cut the plate to a required length uh, during surgery. And then we use also bridge plate. Uh, so combination of plate and uh, rod. Okay, the most important, the techniques, the, uh, uh, what are the techniques or concepts developed to manage uh, fractures? So initially it was a rigid fixation and uh, rigid fixation with interfragmentary compression, either using uh, inter, uh, dynamic compression plating or tension band wiring or lax screw or uh, combinations and adaptation of synthesis. Later, uh, we uh, found that uh, people started working on minimally invasive techniques so that uh, we don't damage the arthroscopic procedures and then open but do not touch uh, technique. And uh, then came biological osteosynthesis and uh, techniques like uh, elastic plate osteosynthesis, uh, titanium elastic nailing. Uh, recently, I started hearing more about dynamic plate osteosynthesis and various combinations of uh, these uh, uh, techniques. And uh, always bone grafting will uh, uh, add to uh, the uh, fractures at times. So what is open but do not uh, touch uh, concept? Uh, where with minimal approach at the site of fracture, uh, we can try to align the bone fragments without exposing the fracture site. And uh, resisting mechanical reconstruction uh, is supposed to be critical when we perform this uh, technique. The, 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 the way we do is uh, just make uh, an opening without exposing the fracture site, try to align the fracture fragments uh, uh, either by using a fluoroscopy or by uh, manual uh, alignment, and then uh, try to stabilize the uh, fracture. 
so that is called as open but do not uh, touch concept so so that we are not touching the fractured uh, bone surface or never we handle the uh, fractured fragments so wherein we try to uh, reduce the fractured fragment use implants to stabilize this is one of the patient uh, we did here in uh, the school of vet medicine where a fractured uh, uh, distal humerus was uh, stabilized with a lax screw and uh, anti rotational uh, k wire uh, without without exposing the fractured side or exposing the fragments uh, similarly very recently we did this uh, patient uh, by following open but uh, do not uh, touch uh, method or technique Um, so, you fracture stabilization is uh, as we uh, went through uh, exact reduction of all fracture fragments and then using lax screws, the dynamic compression plates. Um, but then we have to uh, uh, dissect the periosteum and uh, soft tissues or muscles. Uh, so, uh, until 1990, the fracture fixation was uh, by reducing the fracture fragments and providing a stable uh, fixation. was the uh, concept uh, to certain extent uh, preservation of blood supply and then uh, early active uh, mobilization so this is the uh, principle uh, uh, followed after evo uh, introduced the uh, principles uh, but then unfortunately uh, some of the uh, undesired results occurred due to interfragmentary compression uh, due to lack of uh, callus formation and decreased bone perfusion um, and because of direct bone healing uh, we were not able to observe the fracture healing callus we are not sure whether the fracture healed or not uh, at times the fractures uh, get, gets delayed and then uh, ha hard waves are also failed um, so uh, blood supply uh, disturbance is a, a major issue uh, due to the uh, implants and also due to the uh, techniques followed so what exactly uh, went wrong uh, due to Uh, which resulted in failures even though the anatomical uh, reduction was performed very well rigid fixation uh, was also done uh, uh, satisfactorily but then uh, preservation of soft tissues were not satisfied satisfied so that was a uh, reason for uh, failure that's why biological osteosynthesis concept was evolved where it was found uh, sometime during uh, 1990 and uh, later biology was found to be uh, a paramount and then uh, minimal access surgery was uh, thought about uh, where the surgeons give plate osteosynthesis uh, either with or without uh, image guided uh, procedures and then arthroscopic procedures so we also adapted this uh, technique here at the school of vet medicine uh, long before about uh, 10 years before uh, we uh, used this uh, technique for fixing fractures where we make incision only in the proximal and distal end of the bone uh, without exposing the fracture site uh, we stabilize the fracture by creating a tunnel the periosteal region we introduce the pre uh, contoured uh, uh, plate into the tunnel and then fix it with the proximal and distal fragment using a couple of screws uh, so with that uh, the uh, the fracture fragments are not disturbed being a long bone and diaphysis it's not a big deal if you are able to align the major fragments and if you maintain the alignment and if you maintain the length of the bone and the axial alignment the uh, fractures he and ultimately the animal would be ambulatory satisfactorily and we should also remember uh, the difference between absolute stability and relative stability and after all the uh, research and experiences uh, it was found that only the living bone is capable of overcoming uh, motion and uh, bringing up about uh, uh, stability by the formation of callus so certain amount of callus is required uh, for the fracture to heal the, that was the finding so uh, dynamization principles of their uh, uh, techniques like uh, elastic plate osteosynthesis and uh, titanium elastic nailing were also tried apart from uh, dynamizing uh, the uh, fracture site with staged disassembly of the external skeletal fixators or interlocking nails okay let us quickly go through uh, what is uh, elastic plate osteosynthesis where normally uh, uh, in fractures of juvenile or young growing animals for long uh, bone diaphyseal fractures we follow elastic plate osteosynthesis uh, which uh, uh, sometimes helps uh, in uh, very young uh, patients uh, with callus uh, formation and then quick healing of the uh, fractured bone 
in elastic plate osteosynthesis, uh, we use uh, uh, plates in such a way that only a couple of screws for the proximal end and a couple of screws in the distal end uh, are uh, loaded. And then uh, remaining uh, screw holes are made empty. Um, certain amount of elasticity of the, uh, uh, the plate, which helps in uh, providing some micro movement at the fracture site, which is supposed to stimulate and uh, callus formation. And then the, being a young animal, the healing would be faster. So this is an example of uh, elastic plate osteosynthesis um, in a young patient. And this is yet another elastic plate uh, osteosynthesis. We can either use a stainless steel, a medical grade stainless steel plate, or we can use a titanium plates. Titanium is considered superior uh, because of its uh, bio, bio, better uh, uh, biocompatibility or uh, uh, metal quality. Also, uh, the elasticity, elasticity is also superior to uh, stainless steel. Um, so, uh, in uh, elastic plate osteosynthesis, we use uh, often veterinary cuttable plate because of the size of the uh, uh, patient. So, where uh, we are able to preserve the uh, periosteal uh, sleeve to uh, control the motion at the fracture site, which in turn promotes a rapid uh, healing uh, through callus formation. So this is uh, yet another example, uh, usage of uh, elastic uh, plate osteosynthesis where the uh, fracture heals completely within a couple of weeks. So other technique is titanium elastic nailing where uh, we use uh, titanium nails or pins, uh, which allows a, a sort of micro motion at the fracture elasticity of the uh, implant. And then it promotes faster uh, bridging callus. Uh, it's often used in children. Uh, it is also uh, slowly getting uh, practiced in uh, animal uh, patients. Uh, where uh, the uh, titanium uh, elastic nails are uh, introduced in human patients in a, in a, uh, uh, in a resilient fashion or in a, uh, and then depending on the size of the uh, uh, titanium uh, nails, uh, color coding are available. So, but unfortunately we don't have uh, specific nails uh, designed for uh, veterinary patients, but then it's being uh, made available these days. So using uh, um, titanium uh, nails, uh, we can do uh, um, uh, titanium elastic nailing where uh, the nail would give some uh, sort of uh, micro movement at the fracture site. Again, the same concept of uh, formation of callus at the faster rate, and then healing. So this is yet another uh, concept of for fracture fixation. With regard to uh, staged disassembly of external skeletal fixators, so after a rigid fixation of the fracture fragments, after a certain week, number of weeks, we try to remove the, uh, the pins in such a way to provide some loading at the fracture site so that the, the fracture site will be uh, uh, getting stimulated uh, due to the micro movement, which bring about uh, callus formation and then the faster healing. So the same principle of uh, providing some micro movement at the fracture site by uh, dynamization or uh, uh, loading of the uh, fracture site by removing uh, part of the implants. So uh, now the goal of modern uh, fracture uh, stability uh, is uh, found that uh, callus formation is not a sign of instability, but then uh, it is uh, callus formation is uh, quite natural and it is an important uh, process for uh, fracture healing. And it is, uh, uh, it is uh, proved that uh, micro motion at the fracture site or fracture gap is quite uh, important for uh, callus formation. Uh, that's why the dynamic uh, uh, plating uh, osteosynthesis or dynamic uh, plating concept uh, recently. Right. Uh, we should also know what is uh, meant by non osteonal uh, fracture healing, what is meant by primary osteonal fracture healing, and secondary osteonal fracture healing. I'll just quickly go through. Uh, whenever we do a cast application or splint application, the fracture heals by callus formation. So there is no direct bone healing, or uh, it's considered as a secondary bone healing, and there is no uh, uh, osteons crossing osteons where there is a direct bone healing taking place without callus formation. So it's, it's, a, it's a term which is being used as a non-osteonal fracture healing. Whereas the primary osteonal fracture healing, uh, 
when we do a dynamic compression plating or uh, we do a interfragmentary compression at the fracture site, the bone heals uh, directly without, uh, without uh, callus uh, formation. So which is uh, called as a primary osteonal uh, fracture healing. Now the concept of uh, secondary osteonal fracture healing is uh, talked about more, uh, which is responsible uh, for uh, better quality healing at the fracture site. Uh, which is uh, happening uh, in dynamic uh, plating, where uh, there is a less rigid osteosynthesis, uh, which results in micromotion at the fracture site. And then the healing is initiated by periosteal and endosteal callus formation uh, by uh, also uh, osteal a combination of uh, both. Uh, so the uh, remodeling is considered uh, to take place very quickly or fast uh, in a faster manner. Uh, but then the surgeon should know uh, how to influence the amount of micro motion at the fracture site. So that is based on the suitable implants and based on the techniques, we have to see uh, that um, you uh, allow certain amount of uh, the micro motion at the fracture site. So the overall finding was the logical process helped by uh, mechanical stability, no doubt, uh, but uh, union uh, cannot be imposed, but may have to be encouraged uh, by nurturing at the fracture site. And then a certain amount of stress or loading across the fracture site will promote union for the form by the formation of callus. Um, so how the surgeon can influence fracture healing by control uh, micro motion uh, uh, and also uh, lag screws uh, and then bringing about micro motion uh, to increase the bridging length and uh, uh, not loading all the uh, plate holes. So, uh, a small uh, study was done on human patients where uh, the fracture was uh, repaired uh, using uh, dynamic plating, where uh, 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 a plate with a couple of screws were used to uh, stabilize the fracture and allowed a little amount of uh, micro motion at the fracture site. Healing. Uh, however, uh, when a lax screw was used at the fracture site, and then uh, the fracture was uh, stabilized in the same fashion. It failed or there was failure of the uh, implant with the, with the uh, 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 breakage of the implant. But then when the surgeon went again uh, inside and then removed the lax screw and then used uh, again the same number of screws or lesser screws and then used the screws at the end, uh, the uh, fracture healed well. So, uh, it's important about the size of the plate and uh, type of the plate and the number of screws to bring about uh, dynamic plating. Um, so uh, the uh, way uh, the dynamic plating has to be done is uh, we have to use a long plate, preferably titanium, and use a few uh, screws. And uh, we are supposed to omit uh, or load with the fracture side and uh, avoid uh, drilling near the fracture site, which leads to heat necrosis and uh, damage to the bone and blood supply and avoid lax screws uh, wherever uh, possible. And uh, if you still have to use lax screws, uh, never uh, use lax screws through the plate. And uh, very important to use, uh, to load screws at an oblique uh, uh, angle uh, at the plate ends to pull out. And then we have to treat periosteum with care and avoiding stripping the periosteum and wherever possible, uh, the bone fragments with muscle and uh, to, to consider uh, sometimes using a stainless steel plate if it is a comminuted, severely comminuted fracture because stainless steel is superior to titanium in terms of strength. But otherwise ideal would be titanium uh, plate. So uh, we also use Best uh, graft would be autogenous uh, cancellous uh, bone. But there are a lot of options uh, like bone substitutes uh, available uh, readily uh, in your shelf um, for usage. So there are several options and recently a lot of work is being done to hazen uh, fracture healing uh, using uh, stem cells or PRP or platelet uh, rich plasma. So ultimately uh, whatever is uh, promote uh, fracture healing, uh, helping uh, mother nature. To summarize, uh, for early, for successful uh, fracture healing, uh, primary mechanical stability is uh, less important than biological osteosynthesis. 
uh, intact endosteal uh, periosteal uh, perfusion is very very important which is responsible for healing and uh, recently dynamic plate osteosynthesis uh, is getting popular where the uh, plate allows a certain amount of micro motion at the fracture site and uh, surgeon is supposed to know the amount of micro motion at the fracture site and uh, we do have options like uh, bridging uh, plate osteosynthesis elastic plate osteosynthesis titanium elastic nailing uh, and dynamic plate osteosynthesis and so on and there is also an option of uh, doing a staged disassembly of external skeletal fixators and then bringing about uh, dynamization uh, and also uh, bringing about uh, dynamization at the fracture site to load at the fracture uh, interlocking uh, nails uh, where we uh, remove uh, the nails or bolts uh, at one of the uh, fragments to bring about uh, some micro motion at the fracture site and uh, fracture personality and patient factors determine the fixation construct so we have to uh, uh, choose appropriate uh, methods techniques and uh, simple fracture and uh, articular injuries are treated by direct anatomical uh, reduction and uh, Whereas complex and comminuted fracture patterns are treated with indirect reduction and relative stability. Uh, the goal in uh, relative stability using bridge plating and inter, uh, interlocking nail is uh, restoration of the length, alignment and rotation. Whatever is the approach, uh, reduction, fixation, always uh, the surgeon has to respect uh, the uh, periosteum or the soft tissues. So we should always remember that uh, each uh, patient is and uh, each uh, fracture is very different. So we have to choose what is best for the uh, patient and what is best for that particular type of fracture. And the lessons learned uh, by me in the last uh, uh, few decades, and then particularly recent uh, years, the ideal choice for the surgeon in repairing fractured bones with uh, implants and techniques is being both a carpenter to reconstruct the fragments and also a gardener tissues at the fracture site. So the goal of the carpenter gardener surgeon hybrid is to minimize the iatrogenic uh, trauma to the patient while ensuring a speedy recovery. Uh, the surgeon also uh, has to evolve uh, with the constant changes uh, happening uh, in uh, the fixation techniques and uh, the new implants and new designs and so on. Uh, so these are the few, these are few lessons learned, but then uh, uh, everything uh, uh, related to uh, the present uh, uh, way of dealing with fractures. So the constant uh, uh, re reviewing the uh, new uh, concepts, new developments need to be uh, made. And then we have to adapt to the new uh, methods, uh, techniques and new principles and the concepts uh, ultimately to benefit our patients. These are a few of my uh, references. We have to continue to uh, work with passion. And then just to remember my alma mater and few of my mentors. And uh, thank you so much. I should always uh, thank my students wherever I was and I am uh, because they are the motivation to uh, the teachers and surgeons. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ganesh, for a very informative talk. I have three questions for you. The first one is, how can a student who's interested in orthopedics um, get training in the field? Um, yeah, basically whoever is interested in uh, orthopedics or fracture repair has to, to begin with uh, to uh, study and learn. And not just studying, learning is important. Uh, we have to constantly observe various uh, procedures done by the uh, surgeons um, um, and then try to uh, take part uh, in such uh, procedures and then uh, go for um, uh, learning more by attending webinars or conferences and then attend to uh, workshops uh, where you learn the skills. It's more important uh, for a, a surgeon there is to keep on uh, updating the skills, which is very important. So there are several uh, workshops going all around. So you have to attend uh, such uh, workshops to learn the skill. 
and then after learning the skill uh, you try to uh, start practicing uh, so that's the way uh, it has to be done okay and second question to you uh, with respect to post op care of patients um, what would post op care entail can you please repeat with, re with respect to post operative care of the patients um, what would post operative care entail um, usually uh, each uh, type of surgery uh, demands a certain type of uh, post-op care, and particularly fracture repair. Uh, our main aim is uh, that the fractured bone has to heal. At the same time, uh, we want uh, the fracture to heal without any uh, uh, complications like fracture disease or also complications uh, related to uh, fixation or related to surgery. So. Uh, the uh, care uh, includes the care by the, uh, the owner of the patient or animal. Also by the animal itself, how it has to uh, move around. So we need to get the patient as well as the patient owner. So uh, what we uh, do is uh, always the fracture repair. We don't want the animal to get onto its legs. Soon after surgery, we have to uh, go for staged weight bearing. That means we may, uh, we may uh, depending on the type of fracture, we may uh, provide a cage rest followed by a leash walk, a short leash walk, and then a long leash walk, and then um, uh, to move around much more and so on, apart from uh, suitable pain medications and antibiotics to prevent infection and then prevent self-mutilation of the wounds by the animals and so on. So it is supposed to be very important post-operative care it has to be followed uh, strictly by uh, the uh, uh, the vet whoever uh, does surgery. Also, the owner's compliance, the patient's compliance are very important. Uh, more important these days, we do uh, stress on uh, the physical therapy or rehab of these patients uh, post-operatively. Thank you. Thanks. And the last question to you, uh, with respect to the cost, what would be the cost of... Um, these surgical procedures? Um, so depending on the uh, technique, how invasive the technique is, the cost varies. And uh, depending on the implants we use, uh, the cost varies. Uh, uh, orthopedic uh, surgery, particularly uh, fracture repair surgeries where we use uh, uh, internal fixation or external skeletal fixation apart from like, uh, conservative management using uh, splints and cast. So the, the, it is a expensive uh, surgery. Um, uh, but then uh, considering the uh, uh, use of uh, the certain techniques and which can uh, assist in early recovery and then the uh, shorter duration of hospitalization and minimal uh, post-op care and complications are, so these things are a benefit or advantage so that the cost, even though it is uh, a factor, but then considering the uh, benefits and advantages of these, uh, some of these uh, techniques, uh, the, uh, the client can uh, afford to fixation. But then we always have uh, more than one uh, option for fixing fractures, plan A, plan B, and also we do have a plan C. Uh, we don't know uh, at the time of uh, surgery, we sometimes uh, uh, go for a totally a different plan. So we discuss with the clients and then uh, decide what is best for the patient. And then we also give them options uh, with regard to the cost, how best we can minimize the cost and then use appropriate uh, methods or techniques. Thank you. So these are all the questions I have for you today, Dr. Ganesh. Thank you for your very informative talk. And uh, well, I hope that we may have another one soon because I know you have a lot of information to share with us. Thank you. So thank you uh, audience for joining us today. And I would like to invite you to our next seminar, which would be on Tuesday. And it would be delivered by Dr. Mohammed Sani Ismila.
It's entitled Nutraceuticals in Veterinary Practice, a Novel Therapeutic Approach in Animals, Diseases, and the Need for Improvement in the Caribbean Region. So I hope to see you all then. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for the participants and thank you for the organization.